Welcome to the planning board meeting on chapter 179 on August 21st, 2023. This meeting will be held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL 30A chapter, wait, 30A section 20 until March 31st, 2025. And let's see, guidelines, business meetings, speak one at a time, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and recognized by the chair. And I will take, um, find out who is here tonight. Let's see, Kathy Sylvester. Here. Um, Andrea Leapson. Here. Denise Mason here. And Emily Gaylord will be here soon. I know Rachel Blaine, Kathy Watroba, and Annalie Wolfkull are all absent. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'll catch Emily when she gets here, and I'm going to turn it over to Peggy. Thanks, Denise. Right. Would you like me to um, share the, the draft? Sure. That would yes. be great. I'm just going to go up to the top. <laughs> um, so hopefully you got my email that uh, basically summarized the changes since the last draft. So I'm just going to focus on those. And then if there are anything else that I should be aware of um, to get ready for the public information session. So the first thing was to add um, hotels and motels to the use table. Um, and the discussion was to have the hotels be allowed uh, by special permit in the C1 and C2 districts. Um, and then people were concerned about motels. So that's proposed to be no across the board. And later on, when we go through the new definitions, there's a definition for hotel and motel, which hopefully you had a chance to take a peek at. Um, the next one was with respect to a footnote um, one of my staff for another project is doing an analysis of all the zoning for housing and different housing types. And it, if you look back in the definitions for dwelling, um, it specifically excludes mobile home, but there wasn't any footnote attached to single family homes about mobile homes. So I just added this footnote just to clarify it. Um, I will note that um, under that grant, they are looking at different housing types. And so I don't know whether or not mobile homes are appropriate for Deerfield, um, but that might be uh, something that you discuss in the future. But I thought this addition just made it clear that right now they are excluded. It was a little, it was a little confusing um, because uh, the use table didn't really address it. Um, there's new definitions for lot width and depth. And so in the dimensional schedule, if I can get down there, you'll see the footnotes are changed. And later on, we'll go through the, um, the new definitions but it just refers you back to the uh, Article 6, which is where all the definitions are. And then um, it hopefully will be clearer and easier um, in terms of figuring out um, whether or not you have the adequate lot width. And I proposed removing uh, number seven. Um, most towns don't have this. It, it just, you know, whatever the square footage in the lot, that's what counts towards the lot size. Um, but if people want to refine that, so, you know, for example, I guess you could add language subtracting, like if it's a flag lot, the entrance. Um, but I think simpler is better <laughs> when you're trying to figure out whether or not you can have a lot and really um, these can be helpful if you're trying to do infill um, and have additional 
uh, lots that are available, particularly in areas that are served by water and sewer. Um, so having that type of flexibility, I think is important. So stop me if there are any questions as I'm going through. Um, so the next one was um, changing the performance bonds in section 3725. Let me just get down there. Almost there. So there was a concern about um, there was a concern about maybe requiring a performance bond um, because it used to say shall. So this gives the planning board flexibility if it's appropriate to have a performance bond, they can requ request that and re and or require that, um, but it's not an absolute. So you can each take that on a case by case basis. All right. I removed um, 4432, which was a parcel um, that didn't exist anymore. I think it got like merged with another parcel, but anyhow, it's in the assessor's records, it doesn't exist anymore, so. Excuse me, Peggy, are we gonna be talking about 4310, uh, 4300 40. later? Because you've, in terms of the numbering, you just. Uh, what is 4310? Refresh my that memory. Is the, this is the floodplain district. Are we going to talk about that? We're going to talk about okay. that separately. Okay. It's a se se separate yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. section of the bylaw. But yes, right. we will get, get to that. And hopefully okay. everyone maybe got a peek at the, uh, the um, revised version because we were able to meet with Casey today to talk about who should be the floodplain administrator. And I think got that settled, so that was good. Uh, so. Who did we decide should be the floodplain administrator? I'm just Casey. curious. Casey, what? Yep. Hey, Casey. Casey thought she was the most suitable because she's already in that coordination role between the planning board and the conservation uh -huh. and the building commissioner. Um, oh, okay. I'm I'm sorry. I just, I misunderstood. So she is the. I thought you said you talked to her, but, but we, we okay. did talk with her. But there was another suggestion, maybe the yes. assistant town administrator. But when yeah. she saw the list of duties, yep, she really thought that it it should be the town okay. administrator. Okay, good to know. Peggy, to add to that, she can also she'll be the official, but she can also delegate tasks to others. For instance, to the assistant town administrator. So that makes that makes sense, but we yeah. we can talk about that when we get there. Thank you. Yeah. So forty four thirty two, as I mentioned, that parcel doesn't exist anymore. So it just got deleted. Um. All right. So now probably the big change is in the TOD section. And let me see if I can get down to that more quickly. All right. So this is your performance standards for manufacturing, processing, assembly, or fabrication. This is where the TOD, the Tourism Oriented District, got voted in. Um, so uh, I think most of you know you had a meeting with the planning, with the sorry, the select board, like a joint meeting with the planning board and select board to talk about uses that are allowed by right and uses that are allowed by special permit and whether or not some of the performance standards should apply. And basically, uh, my read was that the select board was very uh, supportive of the planning board reviewing this um, and coming back with recommendations or proposed zoning changes. So the ones that I heard the planning board being most concerned about as by right was the hotels. Um, and I also um, thought commercial recreation, um, because it's very broadly defined in the definitions, 
could also have uh, pretty significant impacts in terms of traffic. Um, so those two um, are proposed to move down to the special permit uses. And so you'll see there's a new four and five. And then with respect to the by right uses, um, I propose that for um, those by right uses that they be subject to uh, the following performance standards. One was traffic generation, sound or noise level, and uh, hazardous materials. And those are performance standards one, two, and 14. If there were other ones that people thought were particularly important to pull in, but those were um, the ones that we had uh, discussed the last time um, as potentially um, of concern uh, in, in terms of uh, the level of uh, impact that those by right uses could have. So happy to hear people's thoughts, suggestions for changes. Andrea, do you have a question? No. You want me to go back to the performance standards so we can look at the list? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we could take a quick take a quick look at that. I think what you stated though were the ones that we were really concerned about, especially the hotels by right. Yeah. So here's the performance standard. So um, the traffic generation standard would be one. Um, yep. Sound or noise levels. Um, that's two. Actually, it's two and three. Um, we'll fix that. And then the other one was. Um, I thought about hours of operation, but since some of these are for special events, um, I didn't know if the 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. was necessarily a good thing. Um, it seemed like you might have situations where it would go longer for a special event. Um, Excuse me, can I just add something there? Um, the sure. D2R2 for the Franklin Land Trust mm -hmm. uh, was this past weekend. And I know um, somebody there was showing me pictures from before six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think I think um, that one I'm less concerned about now that we've moved hotel and commercial recreation because that's just a nonprofit event. So that yeah. that would stay in the by right. Um, and so the other one was the fourteen, the hazardous materials can't be can't exceed very small quantity generator. Yeah. So they can have some, but not a lot. Any others that folks want? So we would have one, two, three, and 14. I think that's good. Okay. So not huge changes, but I think the two that people were particularly concerned about. Um, get in three. Oops. I'll do that later. Can't uh, get to my track changes <laughs> when I'm sharing. So. Um, the other ones uh, were so I should mention in signs, Amy um, was working on a sign special permit. So I'm just gonna flip back to there. And she noticed that there was a C3, which doesn't exist anymore. It's now industrial. So I fixed those references in 3220, 3222, and 3250. So thank you, Amy. Try yeah, good catch, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was confusing. I'm trying to look at the bylaws. I'm like, wait a second, C3, I know I. Hmm. So it just happened to coincide. Yep. So let's see, 32. Let's go up a little bit. So there's 3220. It used to have C3. So um, I put in industrial because that's the current zoning official map. Um, and then it was also in here um, in the description. So once again, it's now industrial instead of C3. And then finally, in the temporary signs, it got changed. 
Um, one outstanding item, and Amy, maybe you know this, um, is the Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a special permit as follows without application of Section 5330, which is your special permit section. So is there some other procedure or process? Is it part of the regulations that they follow? Because it's kind of odd because it says you don't need to follow the special permit, but then it doesn't say what you're following. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I saw that too and I thought, well, that seems odd, but you know, what do I know? Um, I can, so sounds a lot by special, they grant special permits without application of sections, uh, yeah. So Amy, are you the, so I, the, the staff support to the ZBA? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I- ask them? Yeah, I'm thinking that, yeah, I should ask Adam. We have a meeting coming up so I can ask them. Would you? Um, so so the, the question is, yeah, what, what's the process if what's we're not process? applying 53? Okay, <laughs> ask Adam. Is it, it may be in the regulations, in which case I can say, you know, please see a Zoning Board of Appeals, you know, rules and regulations. Or if they have something else written up, I, I don't know. But right now it's kind of hanging. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't make a lot of sense to be 32, 40. Hey, Amy, just a question. Do you know when the meeting is coming up? And could you possibly um, email Adam sooner rather than later to get oh, the yeah, answer? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm writing would, a note okay. to, to um, ask Adam. Okay. And, and, nope. you know, that would be I great. I don't want to bring me up at the meeting. Yep. The meeting is um, the 7th. Okay. All right. And then I'm going Thanks. to go to state plan review. So section 5400, we talked about um, the timing or the length of time that the planning board has. Just get down there to make decisions. And it was used to be triggered by the application date. Um, hang on if I can get there. Oh, we've got a ways to go, apparently. <laughs> All right. So we already talked about that now the other boards have 21 days, but here is the change in the hearing process 5445. It used to say shall be made within 90 days of the application filing date. Um, so if you had, you know, several public hearings, you're, you were very, might be very limited in, in the amount of time to prepare your decision. So now, um, the decision is, um, finished within 60 days of the close of the public hearing and folks thought that that was adequate time. Yeah. I wonder, do we take the, so I think that this, the time limits for a public hearing and action may be extended. That was referring to when we had only 90 days from the opening. Just can we take that out now or? I don't think you want to do that okay. because if it's a very complicated site plan review process and you have yeah. multiple public hearings, I don't yeah. think you want to foreclose the ability to extend that. And so, well, I'm just thinking that now that it's from the close of the public hearing, we can have as many, you know, we can extend the public hearing as long as we want. The, the only limit is um, filing the decision after it closes before it was limiting, you know, the um, how long we can have public hearings. I think I would leave this in because it gives yeah. more flexibility to the planning board and yep. if the no, that the, makes perfect. Yeah, makes perfect sense. If That's, the petitioner or the applicant, you know, is yep. amenable to it, then you have that flexibility. So. Okay. Okay. I'm always uh, for giving the planning board more time if they need it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we're going down to definitions next. 
me get down there. Dr. Bohan. Okay. So the adult use overlay maps, I just made a note that they're now shown on the official zoning map and that's why they're being deleted. Um, and so they have red lines through them. Um, we already talked about multifamily and we talked about family last time. So here's the hotel definition. Hotel shall mean a building containing rooms used or designed to be used for sleeping purposes by transient guests where the only kitchen and dining facilities provided are for public use within the building or in an accessory building. So you don't typically have like kitchenettes. I know some of the chains like the Marriott Residence Inn does have kitchen facilities in there. So I don't know um, whether you want to expand this, but this is a pretty traditional, you know, uh, hotel definition. So what do they define the residence in as? I mean, um, well, presumably it, it would be a hotel, but they maybe those towns where it occurs, their definition isn't as strict. Their definition may allow for kitchen facilities as part of the hotel room. So if we, if you would like, I can adjust that. But I started off with a more traditional. <clears throat> I guess I'm not against residence in. <laughs> yeah. I like those personally, but um, is there a reason we should be wary of that? Well, we also had talked about boutique hotels. And is that something that that comes in anywhere else in this? That the intention was to have a hotel be of a smaller size. And so I wonder if smaller sized ones won't have kitchens. I mean, <laughs> kitchenettes. Um, so I wonder if that's part of the. Well, the actually, after meeting with the select board, they at least my um, uh, takeaway was that they were less interested in limiting the size. They were more open to having it a special permit process so that the planning board could decide but didn't want to necessarily limit, like say, well, you can only have this many rooms when there might be a situation where you wanted more. So they were, they were. my sense was, and Denise and others that were there, correct me if I'm wrong, they, my sense was they were more comfortable with having a special permit process and not narrowly defining hotels to limit size like a boutique hotel. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's definitely a special permit. And also, they that's hotels of that sort would only be in the C2 district anyway, which is far out of town. Okay, so the, is there any reason why we would exclude having a kitchenette then? I'm sorry, that would have what? A kitchenette, uh, you oh, know, kitchen kitchenette. So I don't know. I, I was rather it not be excluded but that's just okay yeah. so we can we can say um where the kitchen and dining facilities provided are for public use within the building and we can just be silent about just take out the word only mm -hmm. yeah that seems reasonable okay yeah i'll make that change later okay. so, um i'm not let me just make a note to myself I mean, I have no idea what other neighboring hotels. I mean, the only large hotel that's close is the one in Greenfield. And I don't think they have kitchenettes in the hotel. Plus, no, I think I don't believe so. I think they're pretty standard hotel rooms. Yeah. Just like think... if you if you are familiar with the Marriott chain, like courtyards, mm -hmm. they have like a dining area downstairs, but all the rooms right. just have, you know, like mini fridges. They don't have any kitchen facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a more standard hotel room. Right. Uh, and then um, we have uh, both lot depth. Um, the building commissioner liked having lot depth and lot width. And there's a new, hopefully much clearer <laughs> diagram of how you calculate those. And the old lot width definition and the very complicated 
uh, diagrams would be removed. Thank you. <laughs> Particularly this one. This one was like it was horrible. Yeah. And then here's motel shall mean an attached, semi-detached, or detached dwelling units having separate outside entrances, parking space convenient to each unit, and providing lodging for a transient clientele. So it's a traditional motel where you drive up to your room and you walk in the door and there's no you're not walking through a lobby or an el you know with an elevator or different facilities. So Peggy, and and when we first started out in the in the use table, you added hotels and motels, but I thought we put no for motels. We did, but we need to define them. Oh, oh okay. If people want to know got the it. difference between got it, got the hotel it. and the motel. Got it. okay, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um we haven't been able to find out what Article 7 of the General Bylaws is. So I just deleted it. If somebody finds it, we can add it back in. But at this point, I, we've asked, I think Denise has asked like several times and no one seems to know where this is or <laughs> where right. it came from. So uh, I if just, it exists, yeah. yeah, if it exists. Um, I think that was it for this part of the discussion. Are there any other changes that folks would like to see before I move on to the floodplain bylaws? Mm -hmm. If not, I think we're good to go for your public information session. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing this and see if I can get the uh, floodplain bylaw up. You're muted, Denise. Muted? I'm not muted. Well, you were. Yeah. I couldn't hear you. Your mouth was. Oh, muted. that's weird. <laughs> oh, well, no, I was just going to say if anyone's wondering, Mr. Cunningham is just watching tonight. And since there's no public comment, he's just listening tonight. In case anyone was wondering. So I hope you're enjoying the show, Mr. Cunningham. <laughs> All right. Um, so the significant changes from the last time we looked at this um, are the designation of the floodplain administrator. Um, so I'm just going to go to that first, and then I'm going to back up to the ag structures. Um, so um, after uh, meeting with Casey and Denise, the thought was that the best person to be the official floodplain administrator for the town would be the town administrator. And these are all their responsibilities. It's really a coordination, um, an administrative role. Um, what's proposed is that the review is done by the Conservation Commission because chances are they're reviewing uh, the development proposal anyhow for the Wetlands Protection Act since the floodplains are subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and uh, the planning board has a jurisdiction over special permits of uses. Um, so that fits by right, it's going through the CONCOM. Um, and also if it's the special permit, but then there's an extra layer of planning board review if it's a special permit process. So can I is this a good time to ask my question? I'm wondering why yeah. is is the um, planning board the special permit granting authority and not the ZBA? Um, as historically, um, your existing bylaws have the planning board as the special permit authority. So I did not change that. So if you look at uses by special permit, um, it's calls for a review by the planning board. 
is granted by the planning board. So I don't know historically what the decision was there, but I did not change that. Thoughts from any other planning board member? No? I think in many towns, you know, there's some things that the planning board does and then other special permits are granted by the ZBA. So there's often kind of a mix of responsibilities. Right, and down in 4315, it says that the review will be done either by the planning board or the ZBA as appropriate. <laughs> so I was confused by. Well, that's because the subdivisions are definitely done by the planning board and the development proposals, if they might be going through the ZBA as a special permit. So um, I can try and make that, that clear. Let me think about that, Denise. That, Andrea, that's a good point. Let me think about that some more. I may adjust that to make it just the planning board. But I was thinking that the planning board might be doing a special permit process for a particular use separate from the floodplain issue. And if they were doing that, then they would look at these different standards during their special permit process. And I don't know, I don't think this is as clearly spelled out in the special permit criteria section. But let me go back and take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. Let me just take a note of that. It's hard to retrofit bylaws. <laughs> Sometimes it's easier just to like start. But I was trying to err on the side of not changing things that didn't need to be changed. All right, so the other thing um, that I just wanted to bring to your attention is right now under permitted uses, um, it basically says you can have any of these low impact uses like ag uses and forestry and so on and so forth, but you typically don't have um, permitted uses to include structures. Um, Deerfield's um, floodplain bylaw did allow structures, which is sort of uh, counter to what NEMA and FEMA are requiring, which is they want development review for all structures, including barns or farm related structures. So in order to hopefully meet the state requirements, I move the barns down into uses by special permit. So no structure in the building, including ag structures, unless there's a special permit granted by the planning board. So it's possible, but presumably there would be a review process. Uh, clearly, um, with all the severe storm events, uh, hopefully people are not locating structures in the floodplains because uh, they can get damaged. They can also impact you know, other waterways and downstream areas. So um, this would provide a, a review process. Um, and the planning board would look at this and decide um, whether or not uh, to grant the special permit. In addition, there's also the review by the Conservation Commission. So um, they would be making recommendations um, to the planning board if, if this was triggered. But hopefully uh, folks are not um, thinking about putting structures in the floodplain areas. Yeah. Any questions about that? So I do have a note with to, that the planning board needs to consult with town council. All of the, all of this should be reviewed by town council. Um, the all the changes to 179 and also the floodplain. But okay. um, there, as I think you all know, in Chapter 40A, Section Three, there's an ag exemption, um, and so typically. Um, agricultural st structures uses are not subject to zoning, but 
the NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program requirements, specifically call for review and um, of everything, any type of development, including farm structures in the floodplain overlay district. So we've got this <laughs> kind of uh, odd situation where FEMA and MEMA are recommending something that's not exactly consistent with Chapter 40A, which is the state law that governs the zoning. Um, so we need to get uh, town council's advice on how, if this wording is okay. Yeah. So that's a little tricky. Um, and we and it's been raised with um with DCR, um, with the floodplain coordinator, and she doesn't think it's in conflict with uh, the zoning act. Um, but I know this question came up in Waitley. You know, the Conservation Commission specifically pointed out that when it comes to their review under the Wetlands Protection Act, that the ag structures are excluded or exempt. And so, you know, here is a case where now they're being added back in under the zoning, but in typical zoning or historically, those ag uses have been exempt. So don't know what to say, not an attorney, <laughs> just a planner. Uh, so we need to get some advice from town council and hopefully they can let us know what they think about that. So Peggy, I'm sorry. So just to be clear, um, we should probably get all of this reviewed by town council, but you're asking specifically for them to weigh in on this uh, 4309. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sort of flagging it like, please okay. pay special attention to this because we've yep. got this inconsistency. Um, okay. So. And we don't want the AG to kick it back. Yep. So yeah and i don't know that um uh dcr and the flip plane administrator are as familiar with zoning as the planning board and town council okay so i will so, um yep i will make sure that that uh, gets to town council okay and then the only other changes, which I sent you a while, I don't think we need to go over them, but the conservation subdivision design, the uh, conservation commission chair come to the meeting. And I just um, added specific references to the FEMA floodplain maps that he had requested and used the term delineation of wetlands by the conservation commission rather than define, because that's the technical term that they use. So uh, minor, minor changes, but just, those were included, but I don't think it's worth like pulling that up. So if there are no other questions on the floodplain bylaw, I'm gonna do a stop share. Any others? That looks good. Okay. All right. Well done. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> oh, that's a lot. You know, and and just when we were on the on um the Zoom today with Casey, you were talking about the floodplain map, which of course we don't have yet. Well, we and have you them, said but maybe... circa 1980. So oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it yeah. has not been updated and yeah. a lot has happened since then. And also talking about, does a farmer really want to put a barn in a floodplain considering we had Irene 10 years ago and we just had this horrendous storm. Any farmer who would want to do that, would I would question <laughs> why. So I think it's probably slim to none, but you never know. And the new maps hopefully will be much better. They'll have yeah. topography on them. They'll be in a digital format, so you can overlay them with other GIS data layers. But right now you're stuck with your paper maps that should be mm. with the town clerk. And they're very difficult to interpret um, whether you're in the floodplain or, or not, um, if you're on the edges. Um, so hopefully in another year or two, those will be coming out. But in the meantime, it's important to get this in place because if you don't have an updated bylaw, um, uh, there's the potential for um, losing your eligibility to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program, which I'm sure any of the property owners that are in it right now would not be very happy about that. So. Hopefully. 
So I will be sending this latest draft off to the National Flood Insurance Program coordinator at DCR and asking for their uh, review. So she may have some suggested changes, but I think it's in it can good shape now and, and hopefully those would be minor. Do you have any idea how long that might take to get back? She's very quick. It's usually yes. within a week. Okay. Oh, so we, that's would, great. we would know by the, I think, the public information session. Excellent. Okay. And I would also and like to send the public information session draft off to town council. So if they do have specific recommendations, okay. um, we would definitely want those before the public hearing. If we could have them by the public information session, that would be great. Yeah, no, that would be great. As a matter of fact, I know I don't think all of you were on when we were just starting before we started the meeting, but we were talking about having an info session, which is just basically out of courtesy on September 11th, no decisions being made. And then the public hearing would be October 2nd at our next meeting. And then to take it to special town meeting, hopefully on October 23rd. But I do have to check with Casey because she said, if so, we've got to put it on the warrant. And I'm not sure how, when we need to do that. So, I, yeah, I think we may be missing this deadline, but I will definitely check tomorrow. Uh, okay. Yeah, wait till yeah, I mean, Casey mentioned that last week and I said, yeah, we do plan on it. So, okay. Okay. Right. Well, we, we can talk about that tomorrow. Yep. So in terms of um, what I'll be working on is a PowerPoint presentation for your public information session, and then you can also use that for the public hearing. Um, one of you, or more than one of you, planning board members needs to present it. It really comes across much better if it's not your consultant, <laughs> um, <laughs> if it's a member of the town. So it's probably going to be relatively high level. I'm not going to get down into all the weeds, but we're going to highlight the sections that are changing. People will have available, I'll PDF the, the public information session draft. So if they want to review that on your website, they can dig into it. Um, and then, so there'll be three things. There'll be the chapter 179 changes. There'll be the new conservation subdivision design, and there'll be the floodplain uh, bylaw changes. Really? Okay. All right. And then once that we get through the public information session, um, I don't know if town council typically drafts the warrant articles, but if you want me to take a stab at that, I can do that and also the public hearing notice. That would be great. We welcome any and all help, Peggy. <laughs> and then by, uh, I'm happy to attend the public hearing, but once you go to town meeting, since I'm not a resident, it really is in the planning board's hands to right. okay. get it through town meeting. But I'm happy right. to come to the public hearing. If you guys present, I'll just be there to kind of backstop you to answer any questions. Okay. If you get stuck, but. That would be great. Thanks. Okay. So um, since we uh, won't be meeting before the public information session, um, uh, should I just send the PowerPoint presentation to you, Denise, or is there someone else that might want to help present? Um, you can send it to me. I, you know, we can discuss if someone wants to tag team with me, I'd be happy for that. If not, that's fine. Yeah, and if you could um, CC me on that, and then I'll have it like if I, you know, if you want to post it somewhere and just okay. have it at, in yeah. the record. I actually, I, I think it would be fine to keep it for the record, but I would prefer maybe that it not be posted until okay. after the planning board meeting, just because it would be nice if people came. And asked yeah, that. oh yeah, no, I was thinking not posting it beforehand, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but certainly to have it for the record, Af just afterwards, it can be very useful. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. But beforehand, you can post all the drafts, the three yep. drafts, and the um, yep. the proposed official zoning map. Yep. Okay.
Um, I think do we I have already... a copy of the preferred um, zoning map? Is that new? Because I, I got that the October, the one approved in 2021, but we have something uh, newer than that that we're looking at. Yeah, so um, a while ago, um, we sent out a draft um, yeah. one that uh, basically um, uh, has more insets to really blow up the downtown area so that you can see it. Um, okay. So yeah, I, you don't have that, Amy. I can send that along, but it was in one of the distributions. Um, oh, okay. You know, I probably do have it. I just don't remember it. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I, I save everything I get. So the date on the draft is June 23rd. Uh, I'll have that updated. But anyhow, okay. it has a completely different format. So okay. the entire town is kind of an in set. And then the, the uh, downtown South Deerfield area is really blown up. So uh, you yeah. can see all the different overlay districts and all the overlay districts are now on that map. So the adult use, the tourism overlay, the marijuana overlays, yeah. and then all the different um, zoning districts and also the public water supply. Um, that will be very helpful. <laughs> overlay district. So if you don't have it, just shoot me an email and I'll send that along to you. Okay. But the planning okay. board, I think, liked that format much better in terms of clarity. Yeah. So no, much easier to say. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I deal, have to deal with this all the time with Bob. So, yeah, it will be nice to have a, a better Yeah, map. I think Bob uh, liked it, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure I have it. I just forgot. Okay. Uh, anything else for me? I don't think so. I think we're, I think we're good. So I guess I'll just wait to get the PowerPoint presentation. Yep. Yep. We'll do that. Um, I'll speak with Amy. We'll send that, send this out when we get the final draft, send that out to town council and then wait to hear back from um, the floodplain, your floodplain person. Yeah. Which Great. Is back. And so I will copy that uh, on the, that email that goes into the state, Denise, so you can see the comments that come back. Oh, great. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah, thanks. And again, Almost there, guys. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Now you just have well, to get to your town meeting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good oh, my God. Anyway. Hopefully people will be supportive. That's always the hope. Yes. You had good, good results on the accessory dwelling unit, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, you never know. I mean, you never know until it happens. So we'll, we'll hope for the best. Right. But great. So thank you. I think I think we're all set then. Um, so if there's no public comment tonight. Our next meeting is September 11th. And we'll just wait to get the draft. So anything that Peggy sends, I'll send out. And I guess, do I hear a motion? Wait, 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 wait. Um, the oh. ANR, the ANR that we just got sent. Do we want to deal with that quickly, or not? I don't. I think that's mm -hmm. for September. Yeah, that's for the. Yeah. That's in the September that's, meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. for September. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. sign off. Thanks, all. Okay. Thanks so much, Thank Peggy. You. Bye. Okay. Be in touch. All right. To um, anybody else, do I hear? And make a motion um, that we re motion. close the meeting or whatever it is. Okay. I will second that. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Kathy Sylvester? Aye. Yes. Andrew Leibson? Yes. Yes. And, yes. Denise oh. Mason? Yes. Thank you. Was, Thanks, Amy. So I sure. think we're. And I just realized I'm probably taking the minute. So who made that motion and who seconded? I uh, made the motion. And Andrea okay. seconded. Okay. I Kathy, maybe. Okay, Kathy. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Andrea second, and the time is six twenty. Okay, great. Wow. Fantastic. There may be.